Creative Maths brings you absolute and relative references in spreadsheets. Hi, I'm Dr Nick, and in this video I'm talking about relative and absolute references in spreadsheets. I have taught spreadsheets to hundreds of people, and one of the most important principles is understanding absolute and relative references. So, here we go. Spreadsheets are great. I really love spreadsheets, and I use them a lot. Spreadsheets can do lots and lots of calculations instantaneously. Often, when you're developing a spreadsheet, you need to use the same formula for many cells. Or, you may need to use a similar but slightly different formula for many cells. Either way, you don't want to have to enter the formulas individually. And, you don't have to. Here is an example. We are making a table of prices for Helen, who sells a lot of chocolates. Recently, the price per packet changed and she has trouble doing the calculations in her head, so it helps to have a table. Here is a picture of the finished table so you can see what we're aiming for. We start by creating the structure for the table and entering the input values. The first formula involves multiplying the number of packets by the price per packet. An important style rule for spreadsheets is that there should be no hidden numbers in formulas. So, we put the price of $5.85 in a separate cell, which we will then refer to in our formulas. Values like this should be in a separate section in the top left part of the spreadsheet. This way, if the price of Chocolaties changes, we can change it in just one place in the spreadsheet. We enter the formula in the top cell of the table, cell B5. In this case, we are multiplying the number of packets of Chocolaties, 1, which is in A5, by the price, $5.85, which is in cell B2. By highlighting the cell and clicking in the formula bar, we can see which cells are being used in the formula. We check that the formula works by changing the numbers. When we change from one packet to 10, the price goes from $5.85 to $58.50. Correct! When we change the price to $6, the total price for 10 packets goes to 60. Then we put it back how it should be. Now, we could enter the relative formulas by hand down the column, but that would be tedious and we are likely to make an error. We want to be able to fill the table by dragging the formula down. Let's see what happens. Oh dear, this is not good. But it happens all the time. That is the cool thing about spreadsheets. You can fix things with the undo button or control Z. But first we will look at what happened. When we look at the formulas, we can see that the formula has changed the row number in both of the cell references, which is meant that it doesn't work. We want the formulas to say A6 times B2, then A7 times B2, then A8 times B2, etc. Those references were relative, which meant that they changed according to their position when they were copied. So we have to do something to stop the B2 from changing as the formula is copied into other cells. We want the reference to the cell with the price to stay the same all the way down the column, so we need to make it an absolute reference. This is done by putting dollar signs in front of the parts we want to stay the same. In this case, we want the row and column for the reference to the price to stay the same, so we put the dollar signs next to the B and the 2. Note that the dollar signs do not affect the way the formula works. The dollar signs affect the way the formula behaves when it is copied to a different cell. Now we drag the formula down, or double click the handle, to copy to the whole column. And voila! It is copied the way we want it to you can see that the dollar signs have made the B and the 2 stay the same. And now we format so that it is clear and readable. We will talk more about spreadsheet style in another video. This was Absolute and Relative References in Spreadsheets, brought to you by Creative Maths. Please subscribe to our channel and check out our website for more resources.